All right, so welcome to Lightroom. So today we're going to be going over what's in the preferences. So we're going to come up here to Lightroom. We're going to drag down and click on preferences, which is also command comma or control comma on a PC. So in here, we've got all kinds of different things that we can set up. Now, some of them might be self-explanatory and easy to understand and others might not. So I'm just going to slowly go over it. Most of the stuff that you see here is set up is by default. So um, the first thing that we see here is default catalog. When starting up, use this catalog. So yes, we want to use that catalog. Now, if you've created a different catalog, you can come in here and tell it to use that catalog instead of the default catalog. But for me, I'm just going to use the most recent catalog or my default catalog. So show import dialog when a memory card is detected. So this is selected by default. So basically, if you have Lightroom open, you stick in some sort of memory card, it's automatically going to launch the import and load the photos. So the second thing is select current and previous import collection during import, and that is just selected by default. So the next thing we have here is ignore camera generated uh, folder names when naming folders. Um, I rename everything, so I guess I could collect, select that, but I don't. It doesn't really do anything because once you override it, it's been overridden. Now, something I do select is treat JPEG files next to the raw file as separate photos. Otherwise, if you have a JPEG and a raw of the same image, it stacks them on top of each other. And depending on how you have Lightroom set up, it's either going to show you the RAW or the JPEG. And it's just a little bit easier if it's next to it for me to get access to it. Because sometimes I want the RAW and sometimes I want the JPEG and I kind of don't have to fiddle around to pick exactly which one that I want. So I leave them next to each other. Replace embedded previews with standard previews during idle time. So what it's saying is all images come with embedded previews. But instead of rendering right away, it's going to wait for idle time. And during idle time, that's when it's going to render your previews. This is a, something that I don't like about Lightroom. And the reason I use Photo Mechanic a lot is because it instantly renders the previews really quickly. So as long as the program is rendering quickly, it's not really that important. So we have some completion sounds. And basically, you can read these. So when your photos are... Uh, importing are ready to play or when the tether when it's finished or when you're finished exporting do you want it to play a sound to alert you that hey this it's done so that's all that's really doing so when something is done it plays a sound i have mine set at default but you can see there's all kinds of stuff you can pick up so presets so i don't use presets i think presets are a huge mistake so i don't Ever use default presets so I don't really have anything set in this is what you'll see so but obviously Lightroom has a whole bunch of presets and if you're kind of fiddling around with them and you want to restore or reset anything you can come in here and do that type of stuff external editing so external editing like sending something to Photoshop so you can see here I have picked the PSD format is how I want it to get sent into Photoshop I want it to be converted to Adobe RGB because that's my working space in Photoshop. I want it to be 16 bits with a resolution of 300. You can also do a secondary external editor, but I don't use one. So this is just randomly set. So here, stack with original. So all this stuff is really not going to matter. But basically, stack with original is it's you're going to take your raw file and your PSD file and load those right on top of each other. Just like I told you, it does with the JPEG. This isn't a huge issue because I don't use Lightroom as my main browser. If I did, I would probably uncheck this so it does not stack because I'm not a huge fan of stacking. All right. And so the last thing that we have here is edit external files. So you can come in here and tell this exactly how you want to edit or change the name of external files when they get sent over to one of these programs. So whatever you want it to do, 
it will do as long as you come in here and tell it how you want it to behave. So import DNG at creation. I don't really use DNG ever, but so we're gonna have the choice of using capitals or non-capitals, compatibility with Camera Raw 7.1 or later, JPEG preview size, you can come in here and change that. So embed fast low data. So this is kind of like a compressed version of the preview, or if you want it to embed the raw underneath so you can always come back. So basically it's gonna keep your raw file and your DNG in the same file. So if you want to do that, you can go ahead and click that, but that's not something I would, it matters to me because I don't use import data, but that's gonna be easy for you. So for reading metadata, so we have here is um, different things so we can check this and it will use it looks like that's a period but I can't really see it um, as a keyword separator or would you rather have this slash as a keyword separator that's just up to you it's not going to really matter that much so here in file name generation treat the characters as illegal so you can't use that that would be illegal um, replace illegal file names with a dash when a file name has a space, leave as is, or you can change it to something else. All that's personal preference um, and kind of depending on your work. So I work on a Mac and spaces and stuff don't really matter. Interface. I have no idea what these end marks are. So if anybody knows what end marks are on the panels, I'm guessing is something to do with these little dilly dads over here but I'm not positively sure so you can change the font size in the panels so it's easier to read if you can't see good like me so lights out so this is changing the color so here where it's black I can change it to gray or white or whatever I want same thing with the dim level so all that's easily changed so our background we can change the background co uh, colors there keyword entry so separate using comma that's just standard so I would just leave comma film strip so you can pick and and show like what you want so if you are stacking it will show how many are there so any of this stuff is easy to read over if you want it you can get rid of it like show photo info tool tabs I'm gonna remove that because it drives me now nuts tweaks so zoom on click point to center that was actually turned off that's something that i've turned on so use typographic fractions swipe between images using the mouse and trackpad so just some basic things so this is turned off by default so i'm it, you don't use your graphic processor a lot in lightroom but if i do need to um i do have the higher end for this model of, of computer when i bought it which is this Novita G4. So yeah, if I wanna, if, if it can use the graphic processor to speed stuff up, go ahead, I'm saying. So camera raw cache settings. So I have it at the default, which is uh, 50 gigabytes. So you could change that if you're running into issues. Video cache, so I don't shoot video on here, so it's not a big deal, but if you wanted to increase that, if you're having issues running video for some reason, you would want to go on here and you could easily do that and if you want to purge the cache in either either one of these which is kind of like a quick access memory you can go ahead and do that and that will get rid of it so develop enable hover preview and preset loop so when you're out here hovering over your image it kind of gives you that little loop preview I, I personally hate that so I would turn it off use smart previews instead of originals for image editing, um, notice it says down here, this will allow increased performance, but may not display decreased quality while editing. So this is something I would not want turned on. I want basically the best quality that I can find. So catalog settings. So if you wanna optimize or change things in your catalog, you can go here. We're gonna actually hit go to catalog settings. And so we'll come here to general and this is your basic catalog settings if you want to change 
when Lightroom updates or backs up its own catalogs, you can come in here and do that. So file handling, so it's giving you some information on just the catalog, on how it loads and what it does basically until you go in there and change something. This is its default, I'm not gonna change that. And then if you have any changes for metadata or any of this stuff, which I don't use, but if you're gonna use face detection, you can turn that on. So EXIF information, when you change stuff, does it change that date or time of when you did it? So it has a edited time in it. So there's stuff in here. If you wanna use it, feel free to change that type of information. I don't know how to get, I don't think you can get back. So we're gonna go here back to preferences. Lightroom Sync, so this is, if you're using like an iPad, or a phone and you have images and you want to sync your photos between Lightroom Classic and just the basic Lightroom on an iPad you're going to want to fill this stuff out and that's how you're going to sync the stuff over a cloud and if you're using a proxy server network you would do this I'm guessing that 99.9% .9 of people are not going to use this and if you don't know what that means then you're not going to be ever using it so hopefully this is a little bit helpful. We've kind of gone through some of these basic settings in Lightroom and sort of given you an idea of what some of them do. Some are helpful to change and some don't really matter. And the rest are just looks on how you want something to look. So if you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.